Hi everyone, Kyle back here with another uh, plugin for Godot. Uh, lately there's been a lot of talk about uh, the A star pathfinding algorithm and there are people in the Facebook group who have been trying to make auto generators and so forth so I thought what I'd do is turn it into a plugin and give you a lot of uh, different things to make it much easier to to work with uh, auto uh, excuse me with uh, a star and the idea here is I wanted to be able to control how the a star map gets updated because right now it's sort of tedious how you update it um, you have to make a either one or more calls to the map and I felt like you should be able to do that automatically and it turns out I was right so to use it all you do is add this node into a tile map in this case, the tile map, the tile set itself, needs to be generated with uh, Tile Setter. I picked that specifically because it's really easy to use. It generates the same pattern, um, but I didn't lock you into it. You can use any other pattern you want. You'll just have to manually create it, and I'll show you how I did that with the Tile Setter version uh, momentarily. And you can see I've got two that work here. They're both the exact same shape. And as you can see, they've got the same exact bit mask. So that all uh, works out correctly. Uh, when you do that, make sure when you come in here that you've got is auto tile checked on. Some of the things that you're able to see are indicators. Let's turn those on so you can see what uh, the actual map looks like here. And you can allow diagonals or not. I'm going to leave that off for now. I'm going to go ahead and restart. As you can see, my little character, this blue dot, he doesn't move according to A star. He just moves around the screen so that I can move the camera. The pink guy, though, he does move according to it. And as you can see, these mountains, they've made it harder to move through here. But because it's the only path through here, it will always pick a path through here if it gets a point in this area. Um, that is given if the mountains don't completely block the path. Now, one of the things that I went ahead and did was I added something. This A star 2D weight, this node uh, is one that you can add via the right click add child node menu or however you want to get to that. And what it does is it adds any weight you want to that particular tile. In this case, I have it so that the uh, the weights add a random amount, and I do that in the, in the main up here. Um, you can see how it's done. It's very simple. I'm going to leave this as the demo. Um, and basically, I just add a random one between 1 and 100 to it. Um, and then I have a max weight set of just 200, but that value is not really that important. It just happens to be what I picked. Um, but the idea is when you add a weight, it's harder to move on those tiles so I just added them for each of these mountains and you can add them however you want you could you know, add uh, you know weights over here over there if you can tell it's kind of stuck wherever the uh, thing is trying to navigate there's no path um, but that is more the problem with my uh, implementation of the enemy movement than it is of the map itself uh, let's go ahead and restart it Let's turn on show diagonals, or allow diagonal movement. That actually pretty drastically changes how these things move. I'm going to update the max weight. Again, it shouldn't matter, but uh, I try to always keep that above the, the, basically where this is meant to map to. I'm also going to change this color because I don't like the blue. This just allows us to more easily visualize. Um, let me make it orange, actually ish. Uh, the idea here is to be able to see how your map was built most easily. You can change these things. Um, the three one seems like a pretty good uh, value, but you can change them still. And uh, the orange conflicts a little bit. Okay, there you go. You can see it now got a point down here randomly, so it was able to travel down there and take a look around. Notice it can't go into the next tile map because 
from these tiles and from these tiles, there's no way to get over that wall, which makes sense. It's meant to be a wall. Um, and these weights, again, they make it harder to get through. They won't stop it unless you actually tell them to. So you can do that. You click on a weight and say, should disable. If you do that, it will never go on this side because this one is blocking the uh, entrance to this. And you'll notice I have snapping on to the same size as the grid squares. Um, that's just for making sure that the weights are placed uh, relatively correctly. And then I just set the offset of the sprite to make it look a little bit better so that it looks like it's actually blocking the, the thing here. Um, at the same time, actually, this guy has this useful little node that I've added to the hierarchy as well called a star 2d character and what this will do eventually it doesn't do it right now but it will eventually um, disable the squares that he's going to and then enable them when he's leaving them. and it does actually do that right now but there's no indication of it so you can't see it um, you also need to have can be passed through turned off so I made that the default uh, if you turn this on it will give it the weight that you put here instead of disabling the node and that makes it just easier so that if you want your enemies to be able to pass through each other or your characters whatever uh, you can do that you don't need to uh, have any special code for that but you'll want to increase the weight presumably because it should be in theory with this algorithm harder to move through a character that already exists now this one will update uh, basically whenever you tell it um, and so something like uh, this when I'm getting targets I just have to call enable disable etc um, I'm gonna leave this in there so that people can use this as their uh, example of how to work with this it's a little bit tedious right now I'm hoping to make that easier and uh, stronger uh, but for the time being, I thought this kind of just works. Um, let me show you the actual way that you build one of these custom tile maps. They're kind of uh, kind of painful, but it's not difficult. It just takes a lot of work. Let's see here, what do I do? I wish I knew a knife. Okay, so I have a custom resource called A Star Two D Map, and all it is is this function which returns a dictionary when you end up wanting to make a new format so when you uh, are not using a tile setter based one so for this all you really need to do is go to your resources hit new script and up here you're gonna go find the a star 2d map and make that where it, what it inherits from. And you set your name. Now I'm not gonna do that because it takes a little bit of time to get everything set up, but you'll just need to override this function. Then, like this, 2D tile setter, or sorry, tile setter 2D map, um, you add these connections. And I've tried to make it as easy as possible, mostly because I had to go through and do this. So these are the auto tile IDs and let me show you that. So zero, zero corresponds to, if we um, come back here and we go into our tile set, whatever this square <coughs> is, is zero, zero. And so these things do go left to right, top to bottom. So it's not too difficult to debug. Like you can see like, uh, when something's on a square like this, if it's moving outside of it, or if the indicators show that it's broken, you can go in and just fix it relatively easily just by finding the tile, counting, starting at zero, and that'll end up doing it for you. Um, but as you can see, the actual addition of these things is a little bit tedious. Uh, but I, I've tried to add a bunch of things. So there's this conditional that will, if it's, uh, in this case, I think auto time is an omitted. Oh, no, sorry, that's if it's diagonal, that's right. Um, then add the connection, and if it's not, it just won't do anything. Um, so 
the uh, ad conditional in this case is for any sort of diagonal monkey business and not everyone wants diagonal so I, I made it so that uh, you don't have to have that and yeah all you end up doing is uh, once you've created that uh, thing you find it here in this case uh, I'm just going to show you that the two uh, the tile slider a star 2d map shows up here you add that if you were starting a new project you would just add that automatically if it was built by a tile setter and everything would just work uh, and then you would tap allow diagonal if you want diagonal movement or not set up some of these values here and uh, put a max weight it can be higher than this probably shouldn't be much lower depending on what type of weights you're intending to set uh, make sure you check is auto tile on if you're using tile setter and this indicator Z index that's just from uh, where you want the indicators to actually show up. I noticed that you know the, because the A star 2D map is uh, basically you know up here below everything it will the indicators will sometimes show up beneath the mountains for example and it just looks a little silly. So I decided to add this uh, the ability to set the Z index on the indicator so that you can pull it up to whatever position you want and then you don't really have to worry about it as much. Um, that's really all there is to it. It's, it's a pretty straightforward thing. Um, I'm hoping I'll have some tutorials and stuff created later for starting from scratch. Uh, this is just meant to be showing you the initial um, thoughts and, and the initial build. This is up on uh, GitHub. I'll be linking to that in the description. And I'll be linking also to my Patreon and my coffee page if you want to buy me a coffee I would appreciate it I am hopelessly addicted and uh, yeah that's uh, that's about it thank you very much